It's the effect that Sankota uses. He's a, a world traveling blogger. Chaos Shati is back with another video. This video is going to be a quick Lightroom tutorial for you guys that do uh, landscapes or either city photography. You're going to thank me a lot for this one. Um, before we get into this, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Also, leave me a thumbs up. This video is going to teach you that till and orange effect. I know I touched on it a little bit in my last couple of videos. Um, it's the effect that Sankota uses. He's a, a world traveling blogger. Um, I really look up to his style and what he does just being an awesome human being. But um, this is gonna show you how to make your, your pictures pop really quickly. Um, I'm gonna teach you some of my techniques. And also, if you like the way I edit my pictures, make sure you check out my store down below in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it, man. I ain't trying to talk your head off tonight, man. I'm gonna show y'all something though. But let's do it. Um, right here, man, you can see it's a photo that I took, I wanna say about a week ago at the Jackson Street Bridge here in Atlanta. Um, it's not too much going on right now. This is the finished product. I'm not gonna use a preset on it because I actually want you guys to see my process and in going into creating this look right here. So I'm gonna show you the before and the after right quick. This is the before and this is the after. Do you see how much, like, how big of a change it is? Like, it's like night and day. I'll show you again, before and after. So um, moving, up, moving along, I'm gonna go ahead and push the reset button. Um, when I go into it, I usually like to mess with the temperature. Um, I'm going to slide it up a little bit. Um, I like the way, I just want it to be like a, a sunsetish look. So I'm going to leave the temperature like that. I'm not going to mess with the exposure. But this contrast dial right here is going to be a game changer because I know that this, this uh, the lens that I shot it with, it wasn't that sharp. So that uh, contrast, bringing the contrast then is gonna make it a lot sharper because it's so soft. Um, let's move down to the highlights. I always drop my highlights, don't ask me why, but it always seems to like do the do a, a magic trick. Like it does the trick. <laughs> but we are gonna up the shadows right now. Up there, uh, about 60, 61, 62, oh damn. About 62. Okay, I like to drop my whites down just a little bit. I always tend to crush my blacks. I like the way that looks. Not, I don't crush them too much, just to my liking. And right here, it's gonna, it's gonna just take the picture over the top. The clarity is always important. Don't overdo it, just put a, a little bit on it. You don't gotta overdo it. I'm gonna up my vibrance. Just whatever looks good. I don't usually go by the histogram up here because I like to go by the eye and what it looks like. I'm not too into the science or uh, all of that. If it looks good to me, then it's a go. Um, I'm gonna drop my saturation down just a little bit. I don't wanna take my colors out too much. Let's jump down into the tone curve. I'm gonna I'm place my anchor right here, drop that tone curve down a little bit. Um, another anchor, bring it back up. Put some more life into it, uh, just like that. Um, this right here controls the fade. We're gonna add a little bit of fade to it. Not too much, just a little bit. Micro adjustments is key, so make sure you use a micro adjustments. Don't just go over the top with it. Um, micro adjustments, man. Not too much, not too little. Just find that sweet spot. Um, gonna put this right here, put this anchor right here. Uh, let's see. I'm using this trackpad, so it's kind of hard to click stuff. Come on down to the HSL tab. This right here controls individual colors. Say I want to take some orange out. It won't, it'll take the oranges out of the photo. It won't just like shift the whole photo. So I like this right here. I'm going to take the yellow down, I'm going to saturate it just a tad bit, and also the orange. Um, the green. Uh, Pretty much good. I like the way the greens came out in the photo, and I'm gonna be shifting it later on to the teal and orange effect. So the orange is gonna be kind of like sunsetish. So it really, it really doesn't even matter what it looks like right now. So we're gonna come down to uh, split, split tone. Excuse me. Um, I want to get some of that that yellow. I mean, some of that orange in my highlights. So I'm gonna find the orange on the highlights um, bar about right here, 
and this saturation uh, slider, this activates it. So we're going to saturate the picture a little bit. You see how, see how that is? See, it's like bluish and coolish. Coolish. It's kind of cool right now. We're going to make it uh, a little warm just by doing that. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave my shadows alone for now. I might come back to it. Um, later on, but we're gonna leave the, the, the shadows how it is. We're gonna come down to detail. Since this wasn't the best lens, it was a it was an alright lens, but usually I wouldn't put this much sharpening in it. We're gonna up the sharpening to about uh, 60, 69, 70. Leave that just like that. You know, usually I wouldn't do this much sharpening to it, but you know it wasn't the best lens, so we're gonna add some of that. Luminance, luminance makes the sharpening that you added soft, it like smooths it out so it's not too choppy. So I like that, and we're gonna use just a little bit of noise reduction on that. Um, come down to lens correction. I always click the remove chromatic aberration. Um, for this photo, I'm gonna use enable profile correction because I know this was a, a Canon lens that I used. It wasn't a foreign lens, and I know that uh, the program is gonna recognize that I use the Canon lens. And if, if you look at these buildings at the top, you can see that it's kind of distorted. It looks kind of like bent over um, with that enable profile correction. See, a lot of people don't really notice. They kind of overlook this, this tab right here. But when you click that enable profile corrections, it also brings back a lot of your um, a lot of the detail in the photo, it like um, takes that warp feeling out. So we can go ahead and click that. You see how the buildings came back. That's a, that's, that's a big key right there. So make sure y'all take notes on that. See, that's the before and that's the after. Brought back a lot of detail in the photo. You can also mess with the distortion or the vignetting on, in this case if you want to. But I like the way that it's coming out right now. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. Transform tool. The transform tool, I like it a lot because um, say I was doing street photography and I seen that, uh, and I just took a picture. You know, it's kind of like when you out there in the city, you get like wild angles. Sometimes the, like the camera's crooked and sometimes it's straight. Sometimes you think it's straight and when you put it in post, it kind of like, it's off a little bit. I usually click auto. Auto doesn't work all the time. So you have to take note of that. In this case, the photo is kind of straight, so I'm pretty sure that the auto is going to correct it and make it straight. See, it, it, it looks a lot better now. It's kind of straight. Well, it is straight. It's level. Sometimes, like, if it's not, if you didn't get it good, it'll just warp it. It'll twist the picture all the way in another angle or something. You'll have to crop it in and all that good stuff. Come down to vignetting. I don't really think that uh, I'm going to be using any vignette on this picture right now. I might come back when I when I do the overall like finishing touches. But this is where it gets juicy. This is the juice right here, the sauce. A lot of people overlook this tab. Also, it's camera calibration. This is how I apply all my teal and orange um, colors. A lot of people didn't notice. I didn't know that they didn't know that, that. I mean, I was using it the whole time. But I always come to the red primary and take it down all the way to the orange about 96, not too much, 96, 97. Um, and then I come down to the blue plant, down the blue primary and drop that down to the tillish. You see how it just brings the photo to life just that easy. Um, it's kind of overpowered for my liking, so I'm gonna drop the saturation down just about a little, about halfway down. Um, that looks good. I'm gonna show you how the before and the after so far. This is the before. This is the after. You can see that it's a whole completely different change to the photo. So after I get the look that I'm going for, I usually just um, go through and do finishing touches on it. You know, it looks good right now, but I just, for me, I just like to just scroll up and see like if I mess with the tint or the temperature or the exposure, like will it make it better or worse, you know? I just like to, just mess around with it. I mess with the tint since I didn't do the tint. Um, that looks good to me. I didn't mess with the exposure coming into it, so I'm gonna see what the exposure can do. Um, negative five is good. Um, 
pretty much the highlights and the shadows and the whites, they look good. Um, the whites, I might drop the whites down just a tad bit more. Um, you can see like the whites, with the whites, uh, it usually brings back detail in the sky because usually the sky is blown out in pictures for some reason because you know you're focusing on the object and not the sky but when you drop them highlights down you know you bring that 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 detail back into the picture um i think everything looks good i like my blacks uh i like the the presence of the, the photo uh what else can we do to it it's pretty much good i like the look i'm a, I'm a, I always go back and do the before and the after just see how great of a difference it is and with the before you can see this sign right here um, you really can't tell what it's saying um, before the edit and then after the edit like it brings out the signs it bring out the whiteness signs also like the cars they look real clean it's just a lot more detail than the before and I, I love that um this this picture is pretty much done to my liking I would usually, when I get to this point, I would go ahead and export it and send it to the client or either post it online on Instagram. It's Instagram ready. Also, you can, you know, it looks like a stock photo. You can do whatever you want to do with it. It's pretty much done from here. Um, if you found this tutorial uh, helpful in any way, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Also, hit that like button. And, um, you know, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.